that early evening period is a time when I think, when my imagination is most receptive to, to a subject. But later in the night, I'm tired, and I think in a way there's a freedom that you gain when you're tired. It's as if your imagination uh, has, has, a, has become um, unfettered, and you can, you, know, you can go to places in your imagination which you wouldn't normally you know, visit. I think all the time I've been working on these paintings, I've been working at night. Start work at about nine o'clock in the evening and stop at about four, which is murder. To do art, you need to be in a trance-like state in some ways in relation to your unconscious. Uh, you also need uh, a hell of a lot of skill uh, and ability. Then you need these two things. And you need these two things to come together. She started posing for me every Wednesday. And as I got to know her, I, I sort of could identify that there was something about her that was like a streak of... Um, it, melancholy is not strong enough, really. It's almost there was something about her which was tragic. I thought it would be interesting to change the context in, you know, in, you know, in which I had her. So I took her outside and then on one, one sort of terrible occasion I said, why don't you lie down in the, on the pavement? I immediately saw something, I recognised something that, 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 uh, that I hadn't sort of identified before in any sense. And, and from then on, it got progressively more and more accentuated as the images developed. I filmed her in the street. I filmed myself doing things, you know, separately and, and together as well. And then I would play it back through the television. And then I could freeze frame, you see. And I'd take photographs from uh, the television as well. And that, that just, that presented to me lots of different images, lots of different positions, poses, um, and qualities which I could then draw on. The street is a very interesting metaphor that you use. I mean, I'm not surprised that you use the street as a metaphor. It's, I think it's a lovely metaphor. There is. The street but which we all share, we all walk down, it is nobody's. Mm. You are really uh, bringing it uh, out, in, in a sense, into the open, into the public, which is, which is one aspect of the metaphor, but also that this is something that we all own. The image itself actually um, makes me feel uncomfortable. That's a part of what makes me feel that it's right. I have the same impossibility that faces me, that how can you resolve, uh, on the one hand, your biological destiny, and the other one, your humanity. And how can, how can these two things ever uh, be brought, how can they be brought together? If one's looking for an art historical base for these, I would say Hogarth, by, you know, is one very interesting and obvious example. And if you want to connect him, therefore, to the tradition of British painting, you've got it there and then. These are modern moral parables. The parables of, you know, women in a potential vulnerable situation which might or might not include or lead up to rape in a public space and being abandoned by everybody. I can't paint about something so universal, so consciously. I have to paint about something which is absolutely particular to my experiences and hope that perhaps it will be understood universally. Guy quite rightly says, you know, there's a, there are areas that are not dealt with by surrealism. He's not dealing with the unconscious, he's dealing with the unease that we experience on a conscious level.
This could be, literally, the scene outside Aldgate Underground Station. You could actually see a woman about to be raped by a man or whatever, and most people would probably pass by, try not to be more. So in a sense, that kind of feeling of, we don't want to deal with these issues, he's dealing with all those borderline areas. You know, it's, it's nothing to do with universal, universal feelings of isolation. As far as I'm concerned, it may be the impact of the paintings, but as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing to do with what that whatsoever. What it's to do with is my personal relationship with this person. psychoanalyze a painting. There's often much more about an internal feeling than there is uh, about an external reality. That's but that's what I want. Story. No, no, yeah, that's what you have to Yeah, make. I don't want it to be a story. Oh, really? I, they're not narrative paintings. They're very personal paintings. It's, it's, it's like the image society has of itself, is that it is still a social contract that works. And I think these paintings point to the fact that it's a social contract that on all sorts of levels doesn't really It's a bit like a sort of magical thing, you know, where you know you've 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 tried to utter a spell in many different ways to see what one works, and you know, so you say abracadabra and dabracadabra and abra abra abracadabra, you know, so you try all lots of different ways, and then then one one of the formulations will just work. <laughs> 